Ah, Tyranitar. Probably the best inclusion of Generation 2. The pseudo legendary that just really, really set apart a lot of Pokemon. It still is quite rare. The combination of Rock and Dark are so. such a weird combination, yet it works so well in so many ways. And before I go into this episode, I want to share with you guys a personal experience I had with Tyranitar and why I like it so much and why I think it's so important to talk about it from both how it was but also how it is today. Uh, I have been playing competitive Pokemon for um, uh, far too long, I think 22 years now. And um, I was lucky enough to have a friend who went to the USA in the 2000s and actually got myself a cup of silver um, almost a year before it was actually released here in Europe. And um, I had like a way, way better start. And we had a competition in 2002 or in Sweden where basically, you know, we had three types of events and then we had like a big SM final basically. Uh, so now way before the World Championships was a real thing. And um, Tyranitar was such a weird Pokemon because it was a Pokemon that absolutely flourished in the curse meta that was Generation 2. And uh, I was one of the few that actually acknowledged that set. And you know, I was, was like 14 when that hit off. And um, I didn't win the tournament, but I came really far. I came to fourth place. Yeah, I even lost the bronze match. It was such a weird thing, just experience that Tyranitar was my main Pokemon. It was such a big and vast difference from the likes of Dragonite, for example, who uh, wasn't really that interesting. Tyranitar had a good stab combination, a lot of things going his way, and uh, it was just awesome. I really liked that. Um, now, with that said, you know, as my shallow memory of my elusive how great Tyranitar was, things did change. And while the meta has been ever evolving, it feels like Tyranitar always had the means to be a part of that. And one thing that comes to mind is Generation 3, you got Sandstream and you got Dragon Dance. It was a relevant big threat and a good pursuit trapper even then. In Generation 4, you got the special defense race in the sand. And it should go without saying that that meant that all of a sudden it could deal with the most ferocious of Psychic and Ghost type and even Special Tiger as a whole check them even though it didn't necessarily resist them because it owned that extra special defense. Generation 5 it was a massive player in the sand or weather war and dominated the sand teams and it was phenomenal with that in mind and I really don't need to say more than that it was one of the key Pokemon because it allowed Excadrill, Sandslash and Stalin to be incredible in that meta. In your ancient six, Megaform and Assault Vest. Um, this guy with Assault Vest was back then and still are one of the best special defensive Pokemon because of that trait. In range Gen 7, all I really can say there is that nothing really went against it at all. <laughs> if anything, things kind of went its way anyway because of it basically was the gatekeeper of what Psychics and Ghosts I would, that was going to be considered viable enough for OU. It basically is that Pokemon that defined whether or not which days and which goes. And what do you know? What happened with her meta where we no longer have a pursuit? Fortunately for me, I don't need to speculate about that at all, as I had the opportunity to ask the person I believe to be the most influential showdown player in this community, and that is Joey the Pokemon who actually took the chance and time to actually respond to this question and what he thinks about the loss of the pursuit on Tyranitar. So without further ado, hit it off, Yoi. Losing pursuit definitely lowered the viability of Tyranitar, allowing it to not really punish Pokemon like Dragapult, Gengar, and Choice Lock, Age Slash into Shadow Ball. That's not to say that Tyranitar is not good, but also with other metagame trends like Defensive Como, Tyranitar doesn't really have the four moves that it needs to be able to deal with the meta. While a strong stab crunch can still break through Seismitoad, uh, non body press Corviknight, even Spadef Clefable doing about 40%, just fishing for uh, potentially a defense drop. Uh, the big thing is that um, Dragapult can come in, 
Draco Meteor it, Shadow Ball it, and just U-turn right out if it needs to, and it's not able to punish it, so it's able to wear them down. Same thing with Gengar, even if Gengar doesn't run Focus Blast right now, which is almost not necessary, just because Tyranitar cannot punish it, and Heatran is not in the tier. Again, I still believe that Tyranitar is a very good Pokemon, and I believe that Choice Band is crazy too, but... Other metagame trends as well, like Excadrill pairs really well with Hippowdon, a lot better than it does with Tyranitar. Hippowdon actually giving it some nice defensive uh, options for Drill, giving it also Sand Rush as well, being able to check Pokemon like Zeraora and other physical attackers in the tier, and just really phasing them out, which is something that Tyranitar cannot really provide. I still think that the best Tyranitar set is Choice Band, a set of Stone Edge, Crunch, Fire Punch, and then your last move being either Ice Punch or potentially Heavy Slam if you want to get that KO on Clefable. As you can shrug off hits from Pokemon like Kyurem and the majority of the meta itself. But again, without Pursuit, it kind of just says, Nah, Titar, don't. We're not going to use you, right? But Choice Band's still good, so you should still use it. Okay? I swear. Thank you so much, Yori, for that. And... I'll be honest here, when we talk about Tyranitar, there are a lot of things that have happened with Tyranitar Generation 8 to keep in mind, but Pursuit is something I I can really just not pinpoint as well as Joey did, so really really keep this in consideration as something that are defining Tyranitar, and something that made it potentially less viable. Now there is one change I do want to acknowledge as something that is in Tyranitar's favor in this generation. Unfortunately, it is a change that is not a part of Smogno U for balance issues, and that is the Dynamax meta. There is a thing to keep in mind here, and that is that Tyranitar is possibly one of the best weakness policy Dynamax Pokemon on the field in the 3 vs 3 ranked meta. The reason I want to tell you guys this is because no matter how I twist and turn things, it is always something to keep in mind that this combined extreme bulk is something that is very rewarded in the Dynamax meta due to the extra HP you get while you're Dynamaxing, and Rock and Dark Top actually are a type of combination that are allowing weakness policy to kick in kinda naturally because there really aren't that many things that it does resist on the switchings because of the broader move pool of today's meta. That said though, as said, it, it, it is its only real positive trait. There are a lot of changes that unfortunately in this generation are working against it. Another thing that we already talked about, but the reason it's such a big is because Tyranitar is the Pokemon that I would say are having that main niche. And its main reason it always has been in OU is because it dictated which ghost types and psychic that was gonna be in OU. If they couldn't deal with Tyranitar, they were never a part of it. <sighs> and that's why it stayed OU for 20 years. And it still is OU, but are on the decline. And that is because of the loss of Pursuit. Its main niche are now gone from the game. While it has viable stats and a broad move pool to allow it to be effective, uh, it should go without saying that having that niche that had it actually survive in specially offensive hits and retaliate them and they couldn't get out actually winning the matchup by switching in losing that niche is something that absolutely hurt this Pokemon's viability and it also allowed Pokemon such as Dragapult, Aegislash, Gengar to go from potentially not as threatening and meta-defining as they are today to actually be meta-defining because they can't get out, they don't need to worry about anything. It's the reason Bishop is considered one of the better dog types of this generation, because at least Bishop has a chance to do the sucker punch to at least make sure that he can't U-turn or get out of them without losing their effective momentum. Tarantra lacks this offensive prowess, it also means that it has to rely on the things it did before, and since it haven't done anything else till now, 20 years in the making, one has to start asking the question, what is it? without the pursuit. It also didn't help that the wide distribution of moves such as Aura Sphere, Close Combat and Body Press are now a part of this game. We are looking at a part of defensive Pokemon that potentially could go 1 versus 1, maybe versus her Tyranitar to absolutely winning that matchup. Now instead, one of those Pokemon are Evilog for example, which I never ever would consider being a Pokemon that could win a matchup where it has super effective damage to, towards Stone Edge. Well, thanks to Body Press, I honestly don't think Tyranitar has a chance. Same thing with um, Corviknight, who 
defensively aren't threatening Tarantar that much with something like Ironhead, but it carries often if you're going for defensive set body press. That's infuriating. Bronzong carries body press. Most defensive Pokemon carries body press. Tarantar four times weak to that. That's something that's always gonna be relevant and something that's always gonna fret. And you don't wanna have a tanky Pokemon that could actually be plummeted by other defensive responses. And I think it's incredible unfortunate for Tarantar to even have it to have be a situation where it actually dies by default because lacking any way of taking those hits better. And the last nail in the coffin really for Tarantar here is that it didn't get anything viably new this generation at all. We didn't get something like Knockoff which would made it a good disruptor Pokemon or something like Sucker Punch to at least compensate for its now, I wouldn't say lacklustering offensive presence, but rather its missing offensive presence to be able to at least do something versus, well, it's potentially low speed. It always has had good moves, but Pursuit has always been a part of that, and the Dragon Dance and Rock Polish Head has always been a bond with the Mega Tarantar, which is no longer course in the game. And while it could run a similar set, it is theoretically tougher to pull off with such a low base speed and uh, the only reason Dragon Dance was viable with Mega Tarantar was because of the extra access speed it got while it Mega Evolved and of course that offensive presence of more defense and special defense and clearly attack. It can still pull off these roles, I don't believe it's unviable to pull them off, I think it's very scary if done right, but it always were considered that it was something that was more viable when we had a Pokemon that could with its stat distribution be flourished by it. So unfortunately, nothing new for Tranator this generation, and while the things it learns are good, it always worth keeping in mind that things got better around him, and that as a result made Tyranitar worse. And this is something that really should go without saying. I really like Tyranitar. It is one of those Pokemon I cherish as, you know, I'm being extremely nostalgic about it. I think it's incredible in so many ways. And it done so good for me in Wi-Fi Bells and in leagues and in tournaments. And it's hard to see this type of downfall as you really can't pinpoint exactly what the big problem is. But of course, the loss of Pursuit is a major blow to its viability because its defensive merits are now being damaged. Before this game was released, or for generation 8 really, it had defensive merits to stay in for matchup that it could potentially lose, maybe, but most likely not, and be able to punish the opponent who tried to get out of a tough situation. Now they can get out, and Tarantar just looks like to be chipping down every time it comes in. And I think that's very, very, very tough to experience. It's, it's a niche that is just gonna rid of the game and all of a sudden Tarantar is gonna fill something else. It is now a tanky Pokemon with high damage output. And that's never how I saw Tarantar. I thought it was a Pokemon that defined and gatekeeped how OU is gonna work. And now it's just looking to be the last OG Pokemon who remained OU for 20 years to be able to potentially be moved down. And even if that were to happen, we all know it's not gonna stay UU, it's no way in hell. It's gonna be rival, I guess, with Hip Out and Gilith, but it's in my opinion it's in a different ball game, just of damage output alone. And yeah, it just like I said, it's tough. Because I really think they ruined this guy, and I think it was intentional. I think the reason for getting rid of Pursuit was to allow sucking ghost type to thrive. And I don't think they knew exactly how much they would thrive. It turns out they frag by a lot, and they are right now defining OU, and I don't believe anybody was gonna see that happening, but here we are. <laughs> it's incredible to see how a meta can shift just by letting one move getting rid of the game. Uh, so with all of this said, you know, really, really want to thank you guys for watching this episode. It's a lot more lengthier than I wanted to, but Tyranitar is also in such a complex Pokemon that I really couldn't do it justice if I didn't talk about it in such a length. And I also really want to thank personally Joey Pokegame for actually taking his time of his day to actually really defining what Pursuit meant for Tyranitar and for the meta as a whole. But Tyranitar absolutely is the one that defined it. It is its main niche. And with that gone, Tyranitar is now 
Not a bad Pokemon, but definitely worse than it was before. And that's why I say, and this is how Pokemon ruined Rantar. And I really hope they fix him soon as possible. So that's it guys, thank you for all for watching, and have a great day. Take care everyone. Bye.